Well, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. It is truly, honestly, a pleasure to be here. One of the things I share with Boris Johnson, our children, that I've not admitted to in the past. And one of them is Turning Point UK. Because I met Charlie Kirk, I was with him just over a year ago in DC, a Turning Point event in Washington. And I thought, wow, here is a young conservative movement, unlike the young conservatives in this country, who generally are pretty geeky, pretty odd, who generally look a bit like Michael Gove. Well, you know what I mean, the backstabbing types. And I saw, well, ask Boris. And I saw Turning Point. I thought, this is exciting. It's buzzy. It's not party political, but it's exciting. It's conservatism that has been packaged and sold in the right way. It is positive. Positive about free markets. Positive about democracy. Positive about sovereignty. And I said to Charlie Kirk, I said, you have got to set up Turning Point UK. And here we are. Here we are, and Charlie. <laughs> I may have said it, but you know something? You did it, and well done you. Well done you. Because the need for this, the need for this is every bit as much as great here as it is on your side of the pond. And it isn't just our universities that are totally and utterly corrupted. It goes through our comprehensive schools. In fact, it goes right down to our primary schools. Now, as the father of four children, I am now banned from every parent's evening at every school they've been to. Not just because I've attended there after a long lunch, but because they're being taught from the age of eight that the European Union means there'll be no war. The European Union means there'll be prosperity. The European Union means we will have a new European identity. And I just can't bear state socialism being taught to kids uncritically. It now starts from the age of eight. So I'm pleased. Earlier, I'm hearing. All right, well, let's start at eight, shall we? I mean, come on. So last week, last week, really nice moment. I'm getting at the moment thousands of letters and emails every week, as you might imagine. Most of them questioning my own parenthood, obviously. Some of them quite supportive. But some get filtered through and put on my desk. And I got one last week, and it's just magic. A guy called Matthew, 10 years old, wrote me a letter on lined paper, handwritten in an ink pen, beautiful handwriting. And Matthew said, dear Mr. Farage, we are being taught things by our teachers that we don't think is right. My dad calls it propaganda. But me and my mate Jim, brackets, fellow lever, <laughs> he said, we know their tricks. I mean, I fell to pieces. I thought these two 10-year-old lads sitting at the back of the class, they're having none of it. So I wrote back to him and I sent both the boys a signed photograph of myself 
and the 45th President of the United States of America, with a letter that finished by saying, you know, yours sincerely, Nigel Farage, leader of the Brexit party, brackets, fellow lever. And I enjoy doing that. So there are, there are independently minded, free spirited people from the age of 10 who will stand up and fight against this sort of thing. Indeed, the years go on. I don't know what you thought. I thought those four young people on that stage earlier were absolutely fantastic and inspirational. Amazing. But to be able to do that, you have to be of a remarkably independent sense of mind. And most people aren't. And most people go with the status quo. And what is happening through British education is we've lost the whole concept of critical thinking. Critical thinking says, here's a problem, here's an issue, here's a dispute, and here are two solutions. And both solutions are valid and reasonable. And you, as somebody with a mind and an ability to argue, make your mind up which of those you support. We are now teaching people, whether it's on global warming, whether it's on global corporatism in the face of the European Union or whatever else it may be, whether it's on defense of our Judeo-Christian culture against mass immigration, whatever it may be, on all of these issues, our young people are being taught that one view is virtuous and right and the other view is evil. And this is what we have to fight. And this is why I am so pleased, Charlie Kirk, that you were brought TP UK to this country. It's vital. <clears throat> we have got to fight. We have got to fight the educational establishment at every level. The fact that 21 vice chancellors of our main universities back the Remain campaign without even consulting their own boards shows you how deep the problem is. Academia is now massively on the left. Academia is no longer objective. I, Charlie, want to say this to you. I will. I'm here at your inaugural dinner. I hope I inspired you to get this off the ground. But I want to say this to you. I know, compared to you lot, I'm really rather old. <laughs> but I'm still full of fire, and I'm still full of energy. And anything I can do to help your cause, to make sure kids are taught objectively at all levels in this country and across the Western world, I am there fighting with you, supporting you, and I'll do what I can. Now, young Ollie here also asked me to talk a bit about the concept of conservatism, which in this country is a real problem because we don't any longer have a conservative party. Oh, I can see the Borisites aren't clapping. Well, I tell you what, have a listen to this. That debate the other night hosted by my favourite organisation, the BBC. That was funny, wasn't it? That Sunday morning, there I was. The Brexit party had been launched three weeks ago. We'd hit the top of the polls. Was there a single question from Andrew Marr about our online presence, our fundraising, our candidates? No. All of it was a series of half-truths that I might have uttered five, ten years ago. And midway through the interview, I thought, you know what? I'm going to really ruin your Sunday morning. <laughs> so I took him on as best I could, rubbish the whole thing. But the BBC the other evening rubbished themselves because of their questioners. One was a radical anti-Semitic Islamist. Another 
was a 15-year-old Green SNP activist. Another, of course, worked for the Labour Party. And that's what all the news headlines are. The Daily Mail, wherever you look, is talking about how awful the BBC is, and I agree. But it's the wrong story. The real story is how awful the Conservative Party is. <clears throat> and I'm sorry if these things are difficult for some of you who are natural Conservative supporters, but there is no Conservative Party. The problem we've got is not the ascendancy of the left. The problem we've got is not the mainstream media. The problem we've got is that right across the West, for over 20 years, so-called conservatives have bowed down to liberal media pressure. That is the problem. And that's why when somebody comes along like the Donald, the media can't believe it. Nobody can believe it. But what Trump articulates is what much of middle America thinks and feels. And you know something? I've been very pleased over these last three years to call him a friend. I was pleased to see him when he was here just the other week. But isn't it fascinating? What he's doing is his utmost to keep the promises he made to the American people in that election back in 16. And the same thing is true here. The same is true here. Brexit, which I've had a bit to do with over the last couple of years, and all that's happened ever since that result is the establishment try to overturn it. The so-called Conservative Party. I mean, if Conservatives don't believe in sovereignty, if Conservatives don't believe in democracy, if Conservatives don't believe in the nation state, then what is the point of having a Conservative Party? And that is where we are. That is where we are. Do you know, of all these great debates going on across the Western world, the epicenter of all of it is the Brexit debate in Britain. This is the cockpit. This is where the debate of national sovereignty versus global bureaucracy, this is the key battleground. Whatever happens here, will influence the American elections next year. It will influence what is happening in Italy and elsewhere in Europe. And I'm going to leave you, actually, with a very optimistic message. What that Brexit referendum did was to let the genie out of the bottle. And even though the BBC don't recognize it, Westminster doesn't recognize it, CNN certainly don't recognize it, but the truth is, now that genie is out, it's never going to be put back in. And we are, we, not for the first time in modern history, we will be at the forefront of this great liberation movement. We are going to beat globalism by beating the European Union. And all I can tell you is, I intend to fully play my part, and thank you.